it's Laura from Divine Light Yoga. Today I would like to share with you three of my favorite techniques to keep children calm, um, which I think we all need during this time especially. So at this time um, at home, you're probably experiencing your children becoming a little bit overwhelmed um, emotionally or mentally, um, perhaps feeling confused about why they can't go outside, um, why they're not able to go to school, why they're not able to um, socialize with their friends as usual. So there's a lot of confusion, uh, overwhelm, perhaps they're experiencing some fear or anxiety and highly likely that they're experiencing hyperactivity. So perhaps you as a parent are seeing that your child is becoming um, really hyperactive and they're just not able to burn off the energy that they actually have, that they usually would be able to use up that energy uh, when they're outside and when they're at school and actually being more contained at home, then perhaps you're experiencing some hyperactivity at home. So these three techniques that I'm going to share with you today will, they're easy to implement and they're very, very fast acting and they're very easy to do together. And once you have introduced this to your child, they'll be able to do it independently as well. And so they're, they're really easy techniques that you can introduce with children as young as two and three, all the way up to teens and as adults also. Um, they're great techniques for, for us as adults to use them. So you can use them with your entire family. So it's three different breathing techniques. So the first one is lion's breath. So if you're not familiar with lion's breath, it's an inhale through the nose and a forceful exhale through the mouth whilst you're sticking your tongue out. So it's quite a fun one, especially for the little ones. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration. It's an inhale through the nose. And an exhale through the mouth with the tongue sticking out. So as an adult, it might feel a little bit strange or weird, but children absolutely love this, especially because they never really get the opportunity to stick their tongue out um, without being told that it's an inappropriate thing to do. So the way in which this uh, helps children's nervous system calm down is that it really does release, that forceful exhalation is releasing heat, is releasing uh, excess energy, it's releasing frustration or fear or anxiety. So anything that is going on for children emotionally or mentally, it, that forceful exhalation through the mouth with their tongue sticking out is really helping them to release mentally and emotionally but on a physical level, they're also releasing heat. It's working with the nervous system in order to help take them from a hyper-stimulated, hyper-aroused place to a little bit more of a, a calming, releasing, um, going more in towards a, a restorative. I mean, it's not a restorative breathing technique, but it is helping them to release and start to wind down a little bit. So in lion's breath, you only need three to five breaths in order to be able to feel the effects of that cooling, calming, releasing um, of, of mentally and emotionally and physically. And it's just a fun one to do at any time. And when I'm using this with children, I always tell them that it's a, it's a great one to use when they are feeling um, scared or angry or frustrated or impatient and that they can do it at at any time and that they can do it um, especially at home you know they can be in the bathroom and do it or they could be watching TV if they're getting overexcited and just do it a couple of times so whatever it is that they're doing almost whatever it is that they're doing uh, it's, a, it's a quick and easy one and pretty appropriate especially at home to um, use that lion's breath to just release anything um, that they're holding on to so whether it's physical physically if they're overheated, uh, if they're hyperactive, or if they're anxious or fearful. And this is one that we would infuse into our regular yoga practice anyway as adults. So we do use lion's breath um, in hot yoga, for example, um, when we do want to release 
um, that excess heat that we have in our bodies. And we also use it um, if we've been doing some challenging poses and we can feel that we're, we've built up a little bit of frustration perhaps with the pose. It's a good one to, um, to just release. So it's, it's a really nice all-rounder. It's a fun one to do. Uh, if you've got a couple of your children at home, they can do it while they're looking at each other. They can do it whilst they're in a playful um, partner yoga pose, um, or they can just do it independently whenever they really feel that need to release. The second breathing technique is a little bit calmer. Um, it's called humming bee breath or Brahmari breath. So humming bee breath um, for the kids. And it's an inhale and an exhale through the nose with the sound of a bee. So it sounds a little bit like this. So you're trying to encourage um, children to increase the length of the exhalation with that humming sound. So getting them to make the humming sound as long as possible and therefore letting the exhale be as long as possible. So you can imagine young children really, really try to extend that um, humming sound to be the longest one, you know, especially if they are competitive and you have another child or you're doing it with them, they want to be the last one to end that humming sound. So it's playful, but it's very, very beneficial because when we extend the exhalation, again, we're working with the nervous system to switch them over from a stimulated, hyperactive, hyperaroused place and bringing them into a calming, cooling, healing, restorative place. So the longer the exhale, the longer the humming sound, the better it is for the restorative, uh, for the, uh, the nervous system, <laughs> sorry, the more restorative it is for the child's body. So you can do this again. This is a really nice one to do right before bed um, or if they've done a couple of lion's breaths and they're still feeling quite hyperactive, then maybe get them to sit down and do a couple of the humming bee breaths. It's a really nice one to do in child's pose or lying on their belly. So when they're starting to maybe close their eyes and just focus a little bit more on what's going on inside for them. And I really like to infuse the humming bee breath with the closing of the eyes and closing of the ears. So they close everything off and make the humming sound. Mm -hmm. Making that exhale as long as possible. And this really does bring them more into a restorative state. So good for bedtime, good when you're getting them ready if you're homeschooling and you're getting them ready to actually start homeschool. Um, because it does get them to feel more grounded, more connected to the body, but most importantly, they are getting um, focused and calm. So we've got lion's breath for releasing, we've got humming bee breath for grounding and calming, both very playful. And the third technique is belly breathing. So where they're breathing deeply into the lower belly, into the uh, belly and the, the abdomen. And this one is automatically very soothing for the body. So again, working with the nervous system in order to take them from stimulated and hyperactive to cooling, calming, and restoring. So another great one to do before bedtime or if they wake up in the middle of the night and they're struggling to get back to sleep, um, if it's before their nap time in the afternoon, or if they're getting really stressed out with, um, for example, homeschooling also, if you, you are getting a bit stressed out with homeschooling, then you can do belly breaths together. So for the younger children, I like to just lie them down and you can place a stone or their favorite stuffed toy or any natural object as nice as a shell or a flower, and you place that on their belly so that they can watch the object rise and fall. So they, as they inhale, then their belly opens up, rises like a balloon. And then as they exhale through their nose, then their belly softens and starts to draw in, pull in. And so if they have the object on there, it's a nice visual focus for them to watch this object rise and fall on their belly. 
for older children, so perhaps seven, eight years plus, and definitely teens, it's nice to introduce a count. So they can inhale for the count of three, exhale for the count of three. Or for teenagers, it's nice to lengthen out their exhalation. So making the exhale twice as long as the inhale. So they inhale for three, and they exhale for six. So that's keeping their mind focused, which if they are in a state of fear, overwhelm, or anxiety, their mind will be thinking about many different things. And that's actually what creates the anxiety, is that their, their thoughts are coming into their minds so fast that they can't actually keep up with it. And so their mental state is um, very scatty and disorganized, and that creates this feeling of overwhelm and anxiety. So if we can help them to focus their mind on something like a very simple belly breath um, and counting each inhale and exhale, that will help them to be focused. So then mentally they will be focused. And then naturally we're soothing the nervous system, we're soothing the physical body um, with those deep belly breaths. So also a great one for you as a parent, a really nice one to do. Uh, as a family, when I'm doing this in family yoga, I really love to get everybody together. So I get the whole family to lie in a circle with the heads, heads in the middle, and you can place your hands on each other's bellies. And so as you are breathing, so as your child is focusing on their own breath, they're also feeling your belly rise and fall. So it just encourages them to take that deep breath because they're feeling your breath and they're imitating your breath and obviously your breath is going to be deeper than theirs is so it encourages them to take that that bigger um belly breath in and that longer exhale which is soothing for the body and the nervous system so there are three techniques three breathing techniques i really do encourage you to start to introduce to children uh, introduce into your family life you can do them right away, they can be playful, they are easy to implement, easy to remember, and especially the lion's breath and the hummingbee breath, you'll start to see that your children will, will naturally start to use them because they are fun ones. You're giving them permission to stick out their tongue. You're giving them permission to make this very unusual humming sound where they close their eyes and they close up their ears. And because you're giving them permission to do that, they're more likely to use that throughout their day. And of course, telling them when is a nice time to use it. So for lion's breath, when they're feeling overexcited, like they just want to jump and run around everywhere, when they're feeling frustrated, they're getting impatient, then they can do three to six lion's breaths where they stick out their tongue. When they are feeling that it's all a little bit overwhelming and that their thoughts are scatty, they're thinking about, thinking about so many things, if they're having difficulty getting to sleep, if they're homeschooling, homework, uh, online classes, if it just feels all too much for them, then they can do the humming breath. Close their eyes, close their ears, and make that long humming, humming bee sound. Um, for it can just be for three it can be very effective just having one or two breaths but if you can get them to do it for maybe eight or nine breaths and they're really going to start to feel that calming grounding effect and then the belly breathing which is a really nice one to do for bedtime for nap time when they need to have a little bit of uh, quiet time or when you as a parent really need to have some quiet time using some nice props to place on their belly or placing your hands on each other's bellies so that you can feel each other breathe and connect with them and encourage them to really take those deeper belly breaths. And a nice image, um, if your children are very creative and they like to use their imagination, um, giving them some imagery with that belly breathing. So a nice one is imagining the sun rise and the sun set or visualizing a jellyfish. So a jellyfish opens up and then it closes in. So whatever, whatever it is that your, um, your child or your children really relate to, if it's an object, place it on the belly. 
if they're very visual, very creative, and they love being in an, an imaginary world, then get them to um, imagine that their belly is a jellyfish or it is the sun rising or falling. And yeah, just introduce these, um, give them a go, see the response of your child, see the response of your family. And at first they might be a little bit mm, like, what is this that you're trying to get me to do? This is kind of weird. But just go with it and just see how they respond and how they feel afterwards. And also make sure that you do it alongside your children. So the calmer that you are as a parent, then of course your children are going to pick up on that. And they're also going to feel and start to experience your, um, your sense of calm as well. So it's good for, definitely highly beneficial to your children, but really valuable techniques for you as a parent as well. So I hope you uh, enjoy those three techniques and do let us know how they, how they are for you. You can comment below after you've tried them and uh, let us know which one your family preferred and which one they enjoyed.